Buongiorno, and welcome back to the Dolomites. In the previous episode, we had two experiences that I'll never forget. The first being hiking up to Seseda, one of the world's most striking mountains. This is unbelievable. This is the highlight. This is probably the highlight of the summer. Then we braved the elements at Sasalungo and again saw some draw-dropping beauty all around us. In today's adventure, we explore and hike around another area of the Dolomites that once again will leave us in disbelief. To the left and to the right, instant death. But we're going to push on and we're going to reveal. You're going to really enjoy this one, guys. So sit down, relax, hit that like button and subscribe. And let's begin this adventure together. We're going to discover some more of these incredibly beautiful mountains today and go on a really beautiful trek. But I just want to fill you in on how we got from La Cristina, which is where we were in the previous video, to here, which is uh, Miralago. Miralago is just the name of this small little lake surrounded by these gorgeous mountains and very close to two of the most incredible mountain ranges and some of the most famous peaks in the entire Italian Alps, which we'll be hiking around in the next few videos. Look, the Swiss Alps were incredible, but as a solo traveler, getting around in Italy, I just find it more enjoyable. It's cheaper, the food's better, and the mountains and the nature are just as, if not more beautiful, in my opinion. Public transport here is very limited, and not the best because for me to get from Cristina to here Miralago is only 60 to 70 kilometers east of each other and there's roads and it was pretty straightforward on the map but it would have taken me six buses and five hours because there was no public transport just going east I had to go west and north and all the way around and it would take it would have taken all day so I ended up getting a taxi now I was quoted 240 euros and I was thinking about not doing it and just sucking it up and getting five buses. But as I was checking out, two other American tourists staying at my hotel heard wind that I was thinking about getting a taxi and they approached me and we came to an agreement to split the cost. So because I was going a bit further than they were, I paid 140, they paid the extra 100 and everyone was happy. And that just meant that we got a glorious taxi ride, door to door, hotel to hotel here. We had a great ride. And yeah, it ended up taking about two and a half hours and yeah, 140 euros, but we got here. And so my hotel is right here, right on the lake. And behind the lake, you can see there are some of the mountains that we're hiking to today. And so yesterday I just had a rest day, had some food, relaxed and went on a nice little walk around this lake in the afternoon. It was beautiful. So yeah, that brings us to here and time for breakfast. And we're gonna make a plan. A very typical breakfast in the Alps. Lots of cheese, lots of parma ham, lots of bread and bottomless coffee. So here's the good news, here's the bad news. The good news is this area is ridiculously beautiful. And as I've mentioned, it's home to two or many actually, probably about 20, but two very famous hikes. And we'll be doing both. Maybe one today, maybe one tomorrow in the next video. We'll see how today goes because the bad news is as any solo traveler who travels extensively will tell you, something starts to become your nemesis, your arch enemy. And that is the weekends. <laughs> Everyone from the cities, everyone's got the weekend off, right? So you jump in your car and you go up with your family to the beaches, to the mountains. And so over the years, whenever 
it turns out to be a Saturday or a Sunday, it always ends up being a little bit of a shit show because there's just so many people. Hotel prices go up, hotel rooms fill up, and trails that are popular tend to be absolutely packed. And I'm a little bit worried that that's what's going to happen today. So I have two tactics to combat the crowds of the weekend, as I see lots of people here just camping up at the, at the entrance of the park itself. Maybe they couldn't even find a room in the towns. The first is to embrace it. You know, there's 7 billion people on this planet and a bunch of them are here. So let's just embrace it. Maybe we'll make some friends. So we'll stay positive on that aspect. And the second way to combat is to go early, as early as physically possible. Now I could have got up for sunrise and I could have gone up there at five in the morning. But when you're paying a hundred euros for a hotel room that comes with free breakfast, that starts at 7.30, you know, you've got to, you've got to hang around for the free breakfast, right? <laughs> so it's now 8.30 on the dot. And I would like to say that I'm here at the entrance of the park, but because this is Italy and we talked about this earlier, there's no infrastructure really for us to get to the start of the trail, which is seven kilometers behind me. Seven kilometers up that road is where we have to get to, to start the trails. Now there is a bus, there is a shuttle system, but it doesn't run this time of year. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start walking. It's gonna take me two hours just to get to the start of the trail. However, I will stick my thumb out. Maybe we'll get picked up by some eager beavers with a spare seat in the car. Absolutely mad success. The second I stopped talking to you, I stuck my thumb out the first car, pulled over, Spanish couple from Madrid, diehard Real Madrid fans, season ticket holders, ultras, and we just talked about football the whole way up. <laughs> so thank you so much for, for you guys for picking me up. And look, when we got to the toll, you have to pay to get in, right, for your car. And they were saying that they tried to get in yesterday, but that it was full at 9.30. They have a certain number of car park spaces, and that's why they were coming up early. And already there was a queue at the toll. The car park's nearly full at the refugio at the base. This beautiful mountain behind me, this is the main hike. This is the famous Tresima, the three peaks. You can only see two at the minute, but from certain areas, you can see three. But behind me is the hike to Mordor. The reason why it's called Mordor, or nicknamed Mordor, as you can imagine, is because it looks quite scary, it looks quite barren, and it looks something like out of the movies, Lord of the Rings. And so I thought we could do this one because it's quieter. The huge crowds and the hikers who've gotten up early are already doing the trail and they're all walking in a line around it. So I think, why don't we do Mordor first? And then if we're feeling up for it, we can rest at the Refugio and then do the main one. Oh, and the best part was I didn't have to pay because when they paid for the car, it was 30 euros. And we thought, okay, that's 30 euros for the car. When we get up here, we'll have to pay again per person, but there wasn't. So I tried to give the Spanish couple some money to say thank you. And they said, no, 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 we insist. Because I was giving them advice on where to go next. And I think they were just like being kind. So I didn't even have to pay today. So thank you so much. Muchos gracias. All right, let's begin. Also, the Spanish couple told me that according to the weather report, it's going to be sunny like this all the way until one o'clock when apparently a storm is due. So <laughs> try not to trip and fall. Let's enjoy the morning. If you're in the marketplace for a VPN, I highly recommend the one that I've been using for over two years, which of course is NordVPN. Just last night was a great example of how easy NordVPN is to use. I'm currently on a little holiday editing these videos and we wanted to watch Paranormal Activity, but it wasn't available in our country. So using NordVPN, we switched our location with one click and there it was on our home screen and we watched it last night. 
and uh, it was terrifying. <laughs> NordVPN lets me search the web and enjoy online content hassle-free and without the worry of any online attacks, any scammers, any hackers, and just knowing that my internet traffic is going to be encrypted and my identity remaining anonymous, very important. NordVPN secures your connection and keeps your online activities private, and it shields you from cyber criminals and ensures your sensitive information stays safe. If you've been shopping for a great deal on a VPN, now's the time to purchase because NordVPN are giving you a fantastic discount. Every purchase of a two-year plan, you will receive four months bonus on top. So join me and millions of other the people who trust NordVPN with their online security, click the link in the description below and enjoy your four months free when you get that two year package. Thanks a lot to NordVPN. Let's get back to the mountains. Another thing to mention is I woke up yesterday with a really painful kneecap. My left knee is in so much pain and I'm basically hobbling around. I'm gonna be taking it easy today. Little steps, no rushing around. For reference, if you do want to come on this hike that we're doing this morning, don't worry. It might seem complicated if you're trying to plan it. There's no real trail uh, signposted back over there and it's quite difficult to find it on Google. Just relax. There's Trey Sema. There's the refugio. There's the car park. Just turn around and come up here. Look for this hill with this path. No trees, quite barren. There's only one and you'll see the sharp, jaggedy peaks of Mordor, the tips of them anyway. Just head in this direction and get walking. <laughs> bella, bella. There's still a tad bit of snow, but uh, as soon as you negotiate this, you're back on the trail again, and Mordor starts to reveal itself. Holy crap. <laughs> the bloke behind me there, I just heard him. Whoa. <laughs> How do you describe this one? Guapísima. Guapísima. Muy guapo. I know that's Spanish, but you know, after meeting my newfound friends from Madrid, guapísima. What's really nice is the white chalk contrasted with the dark green grasses and bushes and then you've got these flashes of beautiful purple flowers and then the bright vivid blue sky wispy white clouds it's just uh, all over this mountain people have been picking up these 
rocks and stones that are just everywhere. And they're making their names, they're spelling out each other's names in love hearts and it's all very romantic. But here there's a STEM activity. <laughs> so I'm gonna contribute to this house. Maybe over the years, if you come here in 2024, 2025 or beyond, this will be a finished house. But just remember that brick, that was my contribution, okay? <laughs> Maybe one day this will be finished. We can turn it into an Airbnb and we can all split the profits. <laughs> Look at this one. Who's this? M and Z. They're in love. Isn't that beautiful? to look. I'm trying to savour the view for the very end. There's a little bit of grass. You can see a few people taking pictures. I think that's the uh, that's the spot. So I'm just walking like this. <laughs> Don't look at it. Don't look at it. Don't ruin it. Okay. That's the little path to the Instagram spot, but there's a gentleman with his drone taking pictures of his girlfriend. So I'll just let them do their thing. I tell you what, it's proper dodgy up here. Like, look at the trail. It's just made of this loose rock. You're going straight down to your death if you uh, slip. It's definitely not a trail for the faint-hearted. Anyway, let's uh, stay tight to this rock face and let's just follow this trail. Maybe we'll find our own Instagram spot. By the way, I really don't think this trail is going to stay open very long because it's proper dodgy. And you know what it's like in Europe if someone slips and falls and dies. That's it. Closed forever. Ooh. Oh, I don't like this. Oh, I don't like this. This whole shelf could just give away. You know, I have been eating a lot of cheese recently. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. I think that's the spot for a reason. It looks very, very solid in comparison to this. Let's just go wait. We'll go wait with the uh, four or five other people. It's my turn. <laughs> There's a very orderly, small queue of people. A couple from Korea, a couple from Spain, a couple from Italy, a couple from Germany. Germany. And one twat from England. That's me. <laughs> and there was one German fella back there, bless him, terrified of heights and his legs went to jelly. And his girlfriend was like, come on, come on, you can do it. And we were all helping him. And I was like, this is the worst part. Once you get out there, it's fine. He's like, how do you know? I was like, I've been here before. <laughs> and then he made it up and he got some nice pictures. Oh. There's not a gust of wind. And it's just uh, unfreaking believable. So come and enjoy the, uh, the peak, the summit with me. As we come up over this bush, a few hazards, don't trip. Wouldn't be a good place to trip over. And then there's another little hazard. Oy. Oh, okay, it's a little bit scary now. Because uh, to the left 
and to the right, instant death. But we're going to push on and we're going to reveal. Not bad, is it? Not bad at all. Wow. I'm lost for words. really fully enjoy it too long because there's a few people and they're kind of looking at me like when's that twat gonna stop talking to himself <laughs> so we'll just go back the views the views are beautiful from every single angle it's just this particular spot here is where you come to take a nice photo and uh, we've done that so let's go enjoy the hike back If you are petrified of heights, by the way, and you can't handle going on that little narrow passage to, for, for the for the gram, don't worry, just come come back 100 meters and there's a trail that goes up and around and over the top and looks down upon the, the viewpoint. And uh, maybe the photograph won't be the same one as 10,000 others, but, uh, at least you won't have to worry about your legs turning into jelly and falling down into your death. <laughs> Someone's got a mountain bike, crazy mother. Anyway, there is a little ledge that I'll take you to where there's nobody there and we can enjoy both looking upon Mordor and Tresima. Two for one up here. Two for one. prefer it up here have a look there's the gram spot as lovely as that is you have the pressure of everyone looking at you like come on hurry up whereas up here hello <laughs> just me in a meadow and a ridiculous view and a mini stonehenge very cool and in that direction there's a peak where you can really see the minerality of these dolomites coming through the iron, that orange and red, that's the iron, iron ionizing. But uh, that's what's really famous about the dolomites, that they're so unique. And where, where else do you get mountains this aggressive? And also in these colors with the whites and then the reds and the grays. Very, very beautiful, very unique. And uh, kind of hard to uh, explain. It's funny looking back over to the main hike, the car park's full and there's still a huge line of ants of people. Come here. I mean, we'll go explore and we'll do that hike, don't worry. That's what this place is famous for. We could not leave this area, especially because we got in for free <laughs> without doing it.
Okay, so I'm going to walk back down and then back up to the refugio where I'm going to have my lunch and fuel up for the big five hour hike around Tresime. Now that hike will be in the next video. So if you do want to see that right now, then just click the link in the description or click the button to watch the next video. Or if you want, stay tuned because I want to show you some of the restaurants and the atmosphere down in Miralago. I want to show you some of the delicious food. So stay tuned and enjoy another few more minutes of this area. So I'll see you in Tresima in a minute in the next video, or I'll see you in a minute down, back down by the lake. Up to you, or both. <laughs> Welcome back down to Lake Miralago, which is where I'm staying. This is the hotel we talked about earlier. And a uh, really nice place. Family run, family atmosphere, and they really take care of you and they answer all your questions and help you figure things out, especially useful for me as a solo traveler. But uh, anyway, let's take a little stroll around the, this lake and um, I'll show you the many sights of this tiny little village. <laughs> Every morning, wake up, they have a great little breakfast there. And then I do a couple of laps of the lake. It takes about 20 minutes to do one lap. And I was also able to get some editing done for the first time in a month. I've really been focusing on the filming and the walking and the hiking and uh, recovery and sleep. And so today when I was editing, and right now as you can hear, it made me laugh because normally if I'm trying to create a little bit of atmosphere, a little bit of ambience, normally add a few sound effects like of forest animals and forest bird life and just this sound. And what makes me laugh is all of my content this summer from Italy and from Switzerland doesn't need anything. Everything is so natural. It really does. This is actually the soundtrack of the Alps. And behind me here has been my second home, whenever I'm not at the hotel. I've been in this pizzeria, which doubles as a bar. And really importantly, I uh, was the only place within a country mile that was showing the football last night. The Italians take football just as seriously as the British. So it was a real intense uh, <laughs> atmosphere. So I didn't really get the camera out too much. But this restaurant has been a godsend. Whether you want just a cheeky spaghetti bolognese or an incredible pizza with tuna and onion and chili flakes and they can customize it. And you can get steak as well, which was really nice. They sell wine by the liter and it's very cheap. And you have <laughs> obviously the lake outside. So whether you're having lunch in the sun or you're indoors hiding, because it, t it tends to rain in the evenings. Every night I've been here, uh, the storm comes over the mountains and then it hits the lake until, until dark really, until it gets calm again in the evening. There's not really that much else to say about this area. You can see there's about 10 or 12 hotels and restaurants. There's a little supermarket over there and that's it. That's it, it's just surrounded by mountains and it's right next to the entrance to Tresema and Mordor and the beautiful hikes. And then Cristina, the biggest city, uh, which is uh, an hour away, is over those mountains in the distance. And that's where we're gonna be going after um, the next trek because I gotta get going and leave um, sadly and head to Venice. But we'll talk about that in the next video. So tune in next time. I'll show you Tresema and the adventure we had there because it was phenomenal. Honestly, once in a lifetime, never forget that experience. So tune back in, we'll learn some more about the Dolomites and I'll show you the journey to Venice and our first impressions of that incredible place. Thanks for watching. Ciao bella. <laughs>